Yesterday, I recorded a video where I showed how to build a simple web to Markdown converter using Cursor's Composer Agent feature. In this video, I am going to try to build the same web to Markdown converter using WinServe. WinServe is very similar to Cursor, but the difference is that WinServe is focused on integrating agentic functionalities more natively, which helps you get started with your projects very quickly. And this is what I want to show you in this video. So when you have set up WinServe, you have to go through all the installation. This is something that you will need to do on your own. And I already have everything set up. There are different ways how you can start a WinSurf project. You can see it right here, code with cascade, open command palette, something like that. Or you can just get started with the cascade here. With the cascade feature, what you can do is you need to press command L to make this pop up. So you can do command L, command L, you will see how it disappears and then it shows back. Now, Cascade is a feature that allows you to build these projects and get started really quickly with your code project. And this is what I want to show you here. There are two different modes here. So there is chat and there is write. So chat is for in case you want to interact with a code base and you want like suggested changes, things like that. Write is where WinServe will actually be able to make changes to your code. So you need to have that on. Because what this will do is it will create files, it will make changes and so forth. And I'm using Cloud Jupyter Sonnet as the default model. And now I'm going to get started with the actual project. I'm going to use the same prompt that I used with the cursor demo example that I published yesterday. So I'm going to paste it right here. And you can see it says build a web scraper that converts web pages into Markdown format using OpenAI GPD for minimals. Use Conda for environment. That's it. I can go and hit enter on this, and then it will start to write the project for me. It says, if you want to create a folder, yes, I'm gonna accept this. And you can see that it created that folder. All right, so it's starting to create files. You can see them right there. Okay, I'm just gonna accept these. I'm gonna accept these. You can see how it's creating things right there. It has created all these files so far. It's creating that main.py. So all of these, I'm gonna accept changes here. All right, so it's continued here. It says, now let's create the con environment and get everything set up. I'll run the necessary commands. All right, so all the files have been created here. And it says, now let's create the con environment. This is something I explicitly told it to use, con environment, and get everything set up. I'll run the necessary commands. So it's going to do this command right here, and this will create the environment. So all of these things, I'm just going to accept these. I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept, accept that. I will go here and I'm going to check what needs to be reviewed. I'm just going to accept all here. And it got stuck there. So it says console terminal command. So if that happens, I can just go ahead and do it myself. So I'm going to open a terminal here. And so this is a terminal. So now I'm in the terminal and then I can just copy this over and then just paste it here. All right. It says it cannot find it. Now I need to go and find the actual directory. This particular project was in the web. All right gonna go now clear this and I'm gonna all right so it, it looks like we're in the project directory now all right so this is what we have so far and now I am gonna try to play around with this so I'm gonna say what's next okay it says you can set up your environment so I haven't created the environment yet so I forgot to do that okay I'm gonna do that now so this environment that yml this is the name of the environment so it's gonna use conda and it's gonna basically install all the packages that I need, which is going to be this list here. And notice that it's using OpenAI, it's using Python.env, the usual, and then it's going to use this Markdown one, and then Beautiful Soup, which is going to be for the scraping itself. Really nice here, it says, I've set up the complete project structure for your web scraper. Here's what you need to do next, right? So I'm actually following the commands here. Okay, so I need to do this part here, as I was saying. It finished installing all the packages that I need. Now I need to go and copy this that end file. And basically, again, as I was mentioning, you copy this one and then you create it. So you're going to go here and you're going to say that env, all right? So we have that env and then we can paste it here. And now we can paste our key. So I'm going to go and copy that from my file here. So I already copied over my API key and I don't really need this. I can just get rid of that, delete that, move to trash. Cool. So that's just setting up things here. Then it says once that's done, you can use the tool by running this. So now I can test it. You can also insert it in the terminal here since this is in bash. I'm going to go and 
click on that, you will see that it shows up down here. And again, very important to follow the instructions here. If you get stuck, just ask it a question. So I'm going to go here and say, okay, it's ready to be used. I'm going to test it. And it says no module name BS4. And why is that? The reason why that didn't happen is because I completely missed this particular instruction. So that's why it's really important to read the instructions. I need to activate my environment. So I'm making mistakes, right? As I go building this project and this is the reason why it's helpful to have like an assistant because it's going to give you those instructions. If you miss it, then you can just, again, ask it a question and then it will take you there. Anyway, so I have the Markdown, Web to Markdown activated there. And now I can try to test it again. I can just click on that and then test. It makes it really easy to work on your project and test things really quickly. All right, so there's definitely some error going on here. It says object chat completion can be used in a weight expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, okay? And then I'm going to copy this. And now I can go and chat with it. I can also just do it here. I can say, please help me fix this error. And I'm showing all of these steps because when I tried to build this program the first time, it went really smooth. And because they're using different models, the models might change. They're probably patching the editor itself. There's a lot of different changes that can affect the outputs that you're getting. It says this error occurs because we need to use the async OpenAI client instead of the regular one. I'll modify the converter.py file to use the async client properly. Will it work? Let's go and check. So I'm going to accept this. Just going to click there as well. And these are the changes that it made. It summarizes this. It's using this now. Okay. You can see it here at the top. Now we can go and run it again. So I'm just going to go again, lazy me. I'm just going to post it there. And then I'm going to try to run it again. All right. So it did something and we did get a result. So that looks like it fixed that error that we were getting. I'm going to clear this and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test this one again, but I'm going to test it on a different web page. So I'm going to test it on my web page, prompting guide.ai. You can see it says scraping content first, and then it says converting content to Markdown, and it's using the GPT-40 mini model to do that. Well, I assume it's using that. I haven't really reviewed the code. I can actually go and check the code myself now. So if I go to converter here, I'm going to change it to GPT-40 mini. That's the one that I want to use. I'm not sure why it's struggling to do that. So I'm going to save that. Anyway, so I know that it's scraping things already. And I know that it's using the model because it's generating markdown formatting for me here which is what I wanted. Now, it's not rendering anything. It's not outputting anything, but that's something that I can improve here. I can ask it to output a file, which will be nice if I'm just using the script to generate the markdown from the web pages. So I'm going to test it again with this model just to make sure it works before I move to the second step, which is where I build the web app for it. It's going to take seconds to maybe a few minutes to do this because it's scraping the website first and then it's going to convert the markdown to markdown using this model. But I want to make sure it works before I move to the second part of the project. All right, so I can see the different formatting here. That looks nice. Now here, it's really hard to tell how good the conversion is if I'm just using the terminal. And that's why I wanted to do an output. But I like building web apps and something that I wanted to test here with this Cascade feature is to see if it can build like a nice full-fledged web app for this particular application. So I'm just going to prompt it to do that. You don't need to get too specific for this. You just tell it something like, now can we convert the code into a working app? And it says, sure, I'll create a simple web application using Flask. Flask is very common with Python projects and it's going to make it user-friendly. Let's create the necessary file. So again, it goes through this flow where it's creating the necessary files for you. It's giving you the code, right? You don't need to go and create the code yourself. This is powerful. I think this is the beginning of a new wave of AI editors where not only are they helping you write code, but they actually create the code base for you, the initial code base at least. And depending on where your level of programming is, you will obviously need to interact with the system if you don't understand much of what's going on. You can always interact with it. This is the power of having something like this accessible. If you don't understand a code, you don't understand something, just go and interact with it. Now, if you understand most of what's happening here, I understand it. I can build an app really quickly. In my opinion, it's still very important to understand these different concepts. Like how do you set up a .m file? That's a mistake that maybe that someone that's a beginner would not be able to spot. You know, how to work with the content environment, different environments, and things like that. Those are really important. And it says, now let's 
update the Kone environment with the new dependencies. This is a really important step. I'm going to say accept and let's see what it does. I can see that it says cancel terminal command here. I'm not sure why it did that. And that's telling me, it says, I see there might be an issue with the Kone command. You can manually install the new dependencies using pip. So I can do that manually. So maybe there is some setting that I have that's not allowing the cascade feature here to do this update for me. So that's something that I probably need to go into documentation and find out. But it told me, right, it couldn't do it. So it's telling me to do that manually. And because I have my environment already activated here, I'm just going to go insert this into the terminal. And then I'm just going to install that new library that it needs. I'm just going to do that. And now that should be part of our environment here. And they say, now you can run the web application. Make sure you're in the project directory and your code environment is activated. It's activated. Run the Flask app. Now I can run the Flask app. I can just go here. I can insert this into the terminal and then I can just run it. And then it gives me an explanation of what it's doing, right? How the application works. And then it says a clean, responsive UI and so forth, right? It's using Tailwind CSS, and then it added Flask dependencies to the environment, that YML. You can always double check that. You can see that those are the dependencies. And then it says, to use the app, enter a valid URL in the input field, click Convert to Markdown. The Convert to Markdown file will automatically download. So that's nice. That's a feature right there. I wasn't expecting that. But anyways, I can go and check the app now if it's working. I can copy this, and then I'm going to open it in my browser. So I'm getting an error with the app here. It says install Flask with the async extra in order to use async views. So I'm going to go and actually copy this. And this happens all the time. The first time I did this, it was perfect. But now it's giving me this error. So that's OK. I'm expecting that sometimes the system will not be consistent with these commands and with the project. And so I just have to be ready to know how to interact it so that it can help me fix the issue. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to copy that over. I'm going to paste that there, and then I'm going to interact with it again. So it says, I'm going to fix it. And then it's going to update the environment, this one here. Yeah, so it's doing this one to handle the async support. OK, and then it's going to update it. All right. It made some changes in the app itself. OK, you can always go and review that. And by the way, it says tree file needs review. So you can always go and review what it's changing. So you get the summary down here, too. And you can accept all changes if you want. I'm just going to accept all changes. And then here, it's telling me to, to install the updated dependencies. So I'm going to go this and insert this into the terminal. And then I'm just going to go hit Enter again. All right, so that's done. And then it says, this is a summary of the changes it made. Now try to run the app again. I'm going to run the app again. Just going to insert in terminal and then run the app. All right, and then I can go back and try to run the application in the browser again. OK, that's really cool to see. Now I can just test this. I can go here and I can say HTTPS prompting guide.ai. And then these are just some instructions here. Then I'm going to convert to Markdown. It says the converted Markdown file will be downloaded automatically. So you could change the behavior of this. You could maybe preview the Markdown here before you copy it or download it. That's something you can tell it to change, whatever behavior you want. The first time that I did this app, it actually created a preview for me, which was nice. But now it's completely different again. It will not do the same thing every single time. And you just have to be ready to know how to interact with the system. I think this is where you will need that skill set to know how to prompt the model and get the desired behavior that you want. So it did download something automatically. And here is the file that it downloaded. I can see it right here. It says, this is the converted.md. And you can see here how nicely it converted the web page. This is really neat. It's using the GPT-40 minimum model. GPT-40 minimum model is really good at this task. And that's really nice. Now I can take this, feed it to a model, build it into my RAG application, whatever it is that I'm building. And this is why I was interested in building this project. And that's it. That's basically what I wanted to show you. I can change, again, how the web app works. But I like the fact that I have a web app that I can easily put in URLs, and I can download files, and I can do that. And I can also add a preview feature, which would be a nice follow-up to this. So that's something that you can do if you want to continue enhancing upon this project. That'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you all in the next one.